Steve Christensen's my name. I actually run a training facility out of St. Louis where we teach people how to get into the ice cream business. Uh, it's called Scoop School. We do classes and different things. And so we've been working with Electro Freeze uh, on training and doing some of the uh, presentations during the show. Now the beauty is that most batch freezers, you don't have any control over that. The beta speeds at, or the dash spins at one speed and that's it, you can't control it. This modification allows you to increase that dasher speed or decrease it depending on the kind of product that you want to make. Um, coupled with that is a viscosity control which primarily indicates when you've reached the viscosity that you want. So the beta speed can be modified and the viscosity control lets you know as the ice cream maker when the product is ready. So these are a huge help to the process of making frozen desserts. They're relatively unique to the industry. Um, another thing that's unique is the warranty on this unit. So it's basically a 135, one year uh, labor, three years parts, and five years on the compressor, which is the main refrigeration process of this unit. Um, so the coverage so far as people buying the unit and getting support is pretty huge. So these two switches over here, one simply does the rotate, so when you're sanitizing the unit in the morning, when you're cleaning it in the afternoon, it just does the rotate function. This switch over here actually activates your refrigeration or your freeze mode. So we've sanitized it this morning, we're going to make some uh, passion fruit water ice. So if I was doing a dairy product here, I would source that dairy product from a mix company or from a dairy. Uh, depending on the type of product that you want to sell, most most dairies do a uh, lower fat, like a 4 to 6 percent fat, like a gelato type of program. Um, a custard program generally is about 10 to 12 percent butter fat, and most premium ice creams are anywhere between 14 and 16 percent fat. So it's pretty easy to source that kind of information, and that's where we can kind of help you in the process of finding a dairy if that uh, be the process. So because we've sanitized it, this water ice base simply is a sorbet base with flavor in it. Water ice is different from sorbet in that it's almost like a slush base that you're freezing down a little bit more. So the water ice doesn't have a lot of real fruit in it, it has more of the Jolly Rancher flavor profile. Once that door's closed, we can pop this straight back in. And also the beauty of a batch freezer that you can't do with a soft serve machine or a custard machine is that you can actually get some sort of fruit profile in there as well. So if I'm doing a sorbet, I can put bananas or strawberry puree in there and I get that kind of fruit profile in the finished product as well. So I turn my dasher on, it will start the process spinning. So I can modify over here my uh, RPM at 230 revs per minute or revolutions per minute is where most uh, batch freezers are running. Uh, we don't need it that high for, uh, for my water ice, so I'll set it on about 200 and my viscosity on about 20 and then I'll turn my refrigeration on. Now, this unit comes either in single phase or three phase. It comes in water cool or air cool. So depending on your application and where you want to put the unit, um, there's a lot of different variety. This unit actually is air cooled, so there's a compressor that's blowing a little warm air out the back. Um, it, it really is kind of the customer's preference. Air cool is a lot more versatile, I think, because you can move it around, clean underneath it. You don't, you haven't connected it to anything. It's self-contained. Um, it does make a little bit more noise, I think, than the water cooled. The upside of the water cooled is that it's quieter. It's a little bit low profile, so it's not as deep but you do have that water bill. And generally a lot of operators who are using water, they're paying for that water coming in and they're also paying for it going down the drain. Some stores will put a cyclic rotation system in or a chiller system if they've got a number of different units and utilize the same water going through. So that's uh, it's up to you. So batch freezers are typically rated by their barrel size. So when you go and talk to a batch freezer manufacturer, seller, they'll say, well, we have a 12 quart, we have a 24 quart. So that's basically the size of this barrel. 
So this barrel is a 12 quart barrel. Now, it will make 12 quarts of water ice, but it won't make 12 quarts of ice cream because you need to have room in the barrel for expansion or overrun when you're making the ice cream. So most batch freezers have a minimum and maximum liquid batch. So for example, this 12 quart, my minimum batch size is about uh, four quarts of liquid mix to about eight to 10 quarts of liquid mix. Okay, I think we're getting pretty close now. We'll do another quick test. You'll find also that um, many different ice cream flavors will change the profile or the freezing point of that ice cream. So for example, if I did a batch of vanilla here, it might only take about uh, 12 minutes. If I put chocolate in there, cocoa will depress the freezing point. So it might take 13 minutes. Water ice takes a little bit less. So a lot of times what you're doing is you're, you're basically um, changing the freeze point of the mix every time you put a different flavor in. Uh, so you've got to take that into consideration in the production process. So we're going to take this away. Take our bucket out. So we can either leave the freezer on, a lot of times I'll take it off just because um, as I evacuate the barrel, I don't want the uh, blades to be rubbing dry on the cold surface. So I'll turn my freezer button off and then we can extract our product out. So again, this is a uh, passion fruit water ice. Now, I wanna just massage that into the corner of the bucket there. I know it's a round bucket, but they still have corners. Um, I don't really want a lot of air pockets in here. And I'm rotating with one hand and just basically manipulating with the other. And the beauty of a water ice product like this is that when it's freshly made, it really does take on the flavor profile and the mouthfeel of a dairy-based product. So a lot of people are quite amazed when you're making fresh water ice and fresh sorbet that it comes across so, um, so fresh that a lot of people are quite surprised that it actually doesn't have dairy in it. So, I don't know whether you're a passion fruit fan. I certainly am. So that's, uh, do you want to hand a few of these out, John, while I? Okay. Just got to scoop a bit out. So, <clears throat> Again, with a water ice, if my dipping cabinet temperature is right, I can take that straight into the dipping cabinet. If it was a dairy base, I would freeze it down and put it back in.